So the participant names are hidden, and so no one else can see who's logged on today. The recorded online training event and the handouts from this session will be available later today on the education and training page of the Act on Energy website. And if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat feature located on the bottom right of your screen. And then I will um, make sure that those questions get answered by our speakers. I also wanted to let you know after this session I'll be sending you a survey, so please provide me with your feedback. And this session is going to last about 60 minutes. So first to start off, I'd like to ask a question. If you could please type your responses into chat, I'd like to know what city you're in today. What city you're logging in from today. If you could put your answers into chat and let us know. Got someone here from Peoria, Illinois, Chicago, St. Louis, Sydney, Illinois. And in Peoria, we've got another couple people from Peoria and someone else from St. Louis. Great. Thank you very much for letting us know. And next, I have some um, questions. I'd like to ask to find out what you already know about energy efficiency options for grain drying. So, um, once you've chosen your answers, please click the Submit button, and I'll give you about a minute to respond. Most of you have submitted your answers, so I am going to close down the poll in three, two, one, and the poll should be closed now. Thank you very much for submitting those responses. Um, I'm going to share those results so you can see what people answered, but I'm not going to go over the correct answers at this point. You're going to take the same quiz at the end of the presentation so we can see how much you learned about energy efficiency options for grain drinking. So um, I'll go over the correct answers at that time. And you can see um, most people answered E for one, for two, and D for three. So now without any further ado, I'm going to introduce Jennifer Brinker. She is an analyst with GS Associates, and Jennifer has served as an energy advisor for Wisconsin's Focus on Energy program since November of 2005. Um, Jennifer completes building energy site visits to evaluate lighting and HVAC energy savings opportunities and supports productive and sustainable agriculture for the agriculture sector, providing profitable energy saving advice for dairy, livestock, greenhouse, and grain farms. Thank you for presenting this information on grain drying for us today, Jennifer, and welcome. Mary, and thank you everyone for logging on early this morning. I hope you have your coffee in hand and you're ready for a, a great grind presentation. Um, this morning I'm going to be providing you with information um, about the whole scheme of grain drying. And at first I set the stage here on why grain is dried. The components of a complete grain drying system uh, going from farm through storage. I talk about the cost of grain drying and I get 
into the subject of the grain dryer specifically and talk about the different types of dryers, it, uh, the handling of grain, and the efficiency measures that we can implement for both of those and the potential savings associated with them. I cover a case study of a farm that I worked with this past summer. It's, um, near the end of the presentation, we'll have Andy, who will come on and talk about the Acton Energy Program and provide some information on potential incentives for grain drying. So with, um, we'll go to the next slide. What we go, Mary. Okay, um, we were wanting to know what you would like to get out of today's online training event. So if you could please type your responses into the chat window again and let us know if there's anything, any specific information that you're looking to get out of the talk today. Thank you. And Sir has answered um, that they would like to learn about on energy opportunities. That response. Um, ideas to improve current efficiency and where energy savings can be captured. Another one. Basic knowledge of dryer types and how to be more efficient in the process. So we'll be covering that. And where is the greatest savings found in grain drying? Thank you very much for those answers. Okay, and thanks everyone for participating with uh you would like to get out of this. It sounds like we have a presentation which should answer those um, requests. And, uh, what I'm hoping is to provide you some general estimates for energy savings. I also have some low to no cost ideas for saving energy with existing dryers. And um, at the end of the presentation, we'll go through a specific case study of a farm that uh, dried grain this, this drying season with a new dryer and has reported some energy savings. And then Andy will go over the potential for applying for Ameren and act on energy incentives. So, yep, I hope we cover all those requests. And if we don't, I will be providing my contact information and you can call, email me directly, and we can go beyond what is presented today. So, um, thank you. Let's first uh, set the stage. Why dry grain? Uh, grain can be fed to corn and moisture silage, which does not require drying. It's nutritionally similar to dry grain, so why we go through the process of drying it? Well, um, as you can imagine, silage that you see in this uh, trailer a lot larger storage volume. It's carrying water along with it, which can lead to spoilage if it is allowed to sit um, without proper storage. And it's really a saleable product in terms of the water that it's carrying, it makes it difficult to transport, and again, it's more susceptible to spoilage if it's uh, hurting the, the moisture and the stalks along with it. On this stage, I thought I would show you um, some information that you can obtain from the USDA. The end uses of corn in the United States are basically for um, food, and feed for cattle. You can see the breakdown of farms that use corn. Are also a quite high demand of corn grain for fuel ethanol production, about 20%. And I believe these are 2007 numbers. 20% of our um, grain goes towards ethanol, and almost 20% of it is also exported. And for as the human uses of grain, you could see broken down as the remainder uh, for cereal and everything through high fructose corn syrup. So that is why we um, are also drying grain, so that we can use it for all these different items. It comes from the grain belt that is uh, 
a big part of Illinois and some other Midwestern states, as you see here, some producing counties. And I'm also going to be drying soybeans with these types of systems. Uh, just a little bit of information on soybeans. Uh, soybeans are used in the United States, again, mostly for animal feed. And about 2% of all the soybeans in the United States go towards human food use. Oil is pressed for human consumption, and the meal, which is the byproduct of oil pressing, is typically fed to animals. Um, oil does also go into biodiesel production. Um, there are some beans that are grown specifically for human consumption, and there are industrial uses for the oils, including those you see listed there. And a picture of where soybeans are produced, uh, it looks somewhat similar to the grain belt that we saw for corn. So we where grain is being grown, and of course this would probably be the location of where it's dried before it's shipped out. Okay, dry grain, and what's the importance of uh, moisture content? When we talk about moisture content, we're talking about the moisture content content of the grain at harvest. So what is the percent moisture or points of moisture of the grain that it has in the field at harvest time? And we're also going to talk about moisture content for storage. So we're going to dry grain down to a moisture content or points of moisture where it would be optimal to be stored. And just a, little, a bit of information about the moisture content at harvest, it's, it's really important because um, if grain is too wet, and sometimes with Mother Nature, we don't have control over this. Uh, if grain is very wet, it's a wet, rainy year, there can be disproportionate drying that occurs or incomplete drying, which can lead to corn spoilage over time. Um, wet grain in the field, there's more trash and dirt that sticks to the grain, which leads to inefficient drying and uh, just lower quality grain after all. And after drying, moisture content is important because it can lead to fungus or mold spoilage for wet corn, and grain is difficult to transport. Here's a resource that I would recommend if you are to grain drying and grain drying energy efficiency. It really covers the gamut of a harvest equipment. And in this particular reference, I'm using it to show you the recommended harvest and storage more contents for grain. So you can see that um, corn and soybeans are listed at the top of the chart here. And for corn, the recommended uh, Moist content for harvest is about 30% moisture. And for storage, we typically see farmers buying grain down to about 14 points of moisture. For soybeans, we have a, a lower gradient to overcome in terms of the pounds of water removed. Typically, it's harvested at 18 points of, of moisture if, if Mother Nature is cooperating. And uh, producers will dry the soybeans down to about 12% moisture. And then you can see the other grains listed here. The component of the grain drying system, I, I just wanted to let you know that um, it's not just the dryer. We use energy for grain when it comes to harvesting it. So there is fuel, uh, BTUs of energy being used to combine the grain, load it into a truck, and haul it away. Uh, there's also electric usage for wet grain holding and transport. There's the grain dryer itself, which I'll be covering in detail. There will be grain cooling equipment, so hot grain moved to storage and fans will turn on. Uh, there's conveying and handling equipment and storage, which is aeration uh, throughout the year. So um, today we'll try to cover these different components, mainly concentrating on the grain dryer and the equipment that's used throughout the year to um, operate a green system. Okay, now I have another question for you. Um, we want to know, how do you know when it's time to harvest grain? 
If anybody knows the answer, if you could please type in your response into the chat window. Um, who can tell us how do you know when it's time to harvest your grain? I'm saying when it's yolk. And the grain tells you it's ready to be harvested. Maybe um, um, someone else is telling us it's dependent on the days of maturity of the seed planted. And all the answers I see coming in right now. Um, Jennifer, can you tell us? Um, oh, here's one more. By moisture content and maturity. Thank you very much for your answers. Thank you for participating. Um, someone else is saying depends on your marketing plan and Mother Nature, like Jennifer said earlier. Thank you very much. Your answers, Mary. Um, we put this question in here because wanted you to think about uh, what a farmer has to think about, and many of you uh, may be farmers listening in, and the variety of answers that we received pretty much cover what a producer has to balance when it comes to deciding when it's time to harvest grain. It's not um, a formula. Uh, there are a lot of the things that folks have mentioned, planting date, maturity of grain, of course, factors into um, the equation. You don't want to harvest grain that isn't mature. It won't be saleable. Um, it loses lose value. Mother Nature plays a key component. A couple of years ago, uh, boy, we had people harvesting grain uh, with snow in the field. So there's definitely some uh, issues with trying to wait for the optimal time with Mother Nature to cooperate. Uh, sometimes she just doesn't. Uh, the, I, Listed here, there's also field conditions. Um, you don't want the, the combines to get stuck or fields maybe to get too rutted up. The buildup on grain, as we talked about, stock quality can tend to degrade over time if it's left in the field. And, of course, if the stocks are not standing upright, the grain will be difficult to harvest. Um, thing that uh, I'll talk about here is the weather conditions, not just the rain and the moisture, but the temperature. Um, this we really don't have a lot of control over, but let's say there's a cold snap during harvest, just something to be cognizant of. If you're evaluating a grain dryer performance and it was an unusually cold year, we need to recall that that, that is requiring a higher temperature gradient to overcome when drying. The grain. So if it's a cold year, that's going to require more fuel for drying. Um, if it's a humid year, of course, you're also going to be um, battling mother nature in terms of the humidity in the air, and that's also going to require a longer drying time or higher temperatures for drying. So as a farmer, they are balancing a lot of different factors when it comes to drying grain. The ultimate goal of drying the grain is to produce a saleable product. And it is sold based on its weight or its weight per bushel. And I just want to briefly go over this. The standard uh, test weights are set by the USDA, and grain is priced according to its percent of the standard test weight. Um, and that's a weight per bushel. And if you were wondering what volume a bushel is, it's 1.25 cubic feet. And the test weight is not the only factor. If grain has low quality because it has dockage or fines associated with it, if it's uh, cracked or infested, of course the product will be uh, downgraded in terms of its price uh, on those things. So just briefly over other factor that a farmer is thinking about. Let's step into the process of drying grain. Uh, this is going to be a very simple description of how uh, drying occurs. And what you see here is a diagram of a bin dryer, which is a simple cross section I thought would be able to describe the physics of drying grain. Essentially, wet grain is being loaded in 
through the top of the dryer and it's sitting on top of uh, any grain that has been dried by a fan and heater system through a perforated floor. Now, the grain has dried because the water is evaporated out of it. Essentially, the hot air that moves through it has a lower moisture content and collects the moisture of, of the grain. And um, the transition here, or, which we'll call drying front or a drying zone, where the wet grain is losing its moisture and evaporating off to become uh, dry grain. And this drying front will move through the pot as the wet grain turns to dry grain. And I'll be showing you a variety of different types of dryers. They're not all situated such that uh, grain falls into a pile. We'll talk about continuous systems. Uh, in effect, they all involve air movement through rain, and we'll just uh, keep that in mind as we talk about various systems. I really like this uh, diagram because it introduces the various grain drying systems along the x-axis, um, and it introduces the topic of energy efficiency and grain drying costs, which I think is why we're all here today. When you look at this diagram, there's two different bars that I want to point out. The wide purple or dark bars show the overall efficiency of the grain dryer related to others, the relative efficiency. And this is based on the BTUs per pound of water removed. The other that you will see here is the skinnier, uh, lighter color bar, and that relates to the cost it takes to dry grain per bushel. Um, now, it might be interesting to see that the no heat, low temperature bin dryers rank very well in terms of efficiency, maybe around 1,500 BTUs per pound of water removed. But at their cost to dry per bushel, they rank, you know, as much as a batch or continuous cross flow heated dryer. And what is that? I'll do um, know about grain dryers and we'll talk about the different types. The reason this is is because the dryers that we saw on the hand side are very dependent on electricity. And typically, as we talk about in this slide, it costs a little bit more to dry grain with electricity-based systems than it does with heated or gas systems. And, of course, this is going to vary according to the utility and gas rates uh, that people are paying. But overall, when you compare gas to electric drying, you get more heat for less with gas, making gas more cost-effective. Um, so just be aware that if a producer manufacturer comes to you or uh, an analysis with a BTU of energy that seems low for a dryer, well, what type of energy are they talking about? If it's electric, it may cost just as much as a, a gas drying system. The notes that you see here for the comparison um, was an informal study done by a utility where they compared all the electric air dry systems to other propane gas, and you can see the electric drying systems cost uh, about three times as much as a natural gas-based drying system. Okay, I'd like to talk to you about the variety of grain dryers you will see in the field as you um, work grain drying systems or just pay attention to them as you're driving through the countryside. You've probably seen continuous cross-flow dryers, which are shown in the pictures you see here. Very popular in the United States. And how these work is uh, heat air blows across the grain flow. Um, in these systems, I'll show you a cross section of them in just a bit. Uh, the grain is continuously flowing, in most cases, through a plum, while air is being blown through the flow of the grain. So, um, just like in all grain drying systems, there is a moisture gradient the grain is drier towards airflow and it's more wet as you get away from the heated airflow. 
Um, I'll also talk about how newer models are providing better energy efficiency and better grain quality. Uh, just to about these two pictures, the picture here on the left is a horizontal continuous flow dryer. The air is blowing through horizontally through the fan you see there with the green housing. Um, the picture to the right is a vertical continuous cross flow dryer. And uh, if I could turn my, my arrow here, let me just use a different tool. Um, basically, the air is flowing vertically through this dryer from bottom up. And we call that a tower or vertical continuous dryer. The efficiency for cross flow dryers can be improved with heat recovery measures, basically taking heat off of grain that's hot and already dried. Um, reverse flow cooling is a type of heat recovery, which I'll talk about. I'll also give you a schematic of the concept of dryation and in-bin cooling, which can also provide some efficiency or savings. First, start off with dry aeration. Follow along with the picture here as I describe the system. But basically, uh, what this allows the producer to do is to dry grain two or three points above the target moisture content. So they're not um, spending gas on the last two to three points, which are most difficult in terms of energy use to remove. Uh, these points of moisture, when you dry grain, come off easier than the last couple of points. What allows the producer to do is drown to perhaps 16, 16 and a half, points of moisture, transfer hot grain to what would be called a steeping bin, where the grain is stored for 12 hours and then aerated with fans. And you'll see in this schematic that there are two steepings that allows uh, for grain to be continuously dried uh, while one is being filled, maybe the other is being emptied. And then finally, you transfer the cooled grain to storage. This uh, process does involve an, an extra step. You're not going directly from the dryer to storage. And you can imagine with the transport of the grain that uh, as the grain bounces around a little bit, that, that does uh, potentially lose some quality, could produce some fines uh, with this type of process. But it does save energy. Now I'll talk to you about a couple of um, operations of, of continuous cross flow dryers. First of all, I'm just going to go over the standard concepts of continuous drying. In this system, it starts off by just telling you what a standard dryer lo looks at. So when we look at heat recovery in the ne next few slides, you can understand how they're different. Um, schematics were provided by Brock, but essentially there are a lot of manufacturers are with the same types of horizontal dryers. So if you could just um, imagine grain coming through the top of the dryer and then it flows through this plenum. Um, it was interesting for me when I learned about grain drying that most of the volume of a grain dryer is the airflow through the system. A big portion of the grain dryer is hot air blowing through the top drying the grain, and as the grain flows through the side of the plant, it's here, and in this case, it's cooled. So the fan that you'll see has both a drying component, the hot or red arrow, and a cooling component right in the same system. So this is a heating and cooling continuous flow system. Now opportunities for optimizing the system in terms of efficiency with heat recovery. So this is a cross-section of a dryer like the one we just saw, where it is flowing through the yellow out of um, the system. It's being heated in the top and dried. And there are two heat recovery options that are illustrated here. First of all, there's heat recovery in the cooling section. The black line that you see, a metal um, encasement, 
where the heat off of the cooled grain is captured and run back through the fan so that the fan, the heater is receiving preheated air. So an opportunity to have heat recovery in both the lower heating and cooling section. So in this case, the shroud is pulling heat off of the um, heat section as well as the cooling section. So it's capturing a little bit more heat to pipe back through the heater fan. Another um, illustration of heat recovery. In this case, you don't see any sort of shroud on the bottom cooling section. Uh, what this system does, if you follow the arrows, is it's actually circulating air through the system. Uh, first of all, we have hot air drying the grain, and then in this system, the arrows are flowing backward, so to speak, because they are sucking air out of the cooling section, um, take fresh ambient air through the hot grain, and pulling that back through the heat fan. So this suction cooling is a type of heat recovery that not involves the uh, shroud of heat recovery we heat recovery we saw in the last cross section. And all producers like that because if you can imagine a metal shroud around the outside is something else that a producer needs to maintain and keep clean. So this is one way of doing heat recovery on a horizontal system that involves somewhat less maintenance. Let's talk a little bit more about the um, heat recovery with the shrouds. Here's heat recovery and suction cooling using both of the concepts. We have the metal duct here for collecting hot air, and we also have the suction cooling where ambient air is being sucked through the grain and back through the heater fan. So again, the concept of heat recovery is taking the heat off of dried hot grain, preheating it, the air that goes into the heat section of the dryer. And uh, that technology has been around uh, since the 70s, and it keeps improving years. Uh, that was heat recovery. Another way that dryers can be used, a horizontal type of dryer, is to heat and cool batch by batch. Essentially, the grain is held within the plenum. It doesn't continuously flow through. and um, um, there's some loss of efficiency as the grain is being held. The grain that's closest to the hot air is going to be drier than the grain on the outside wall. And it requires a lot of supervision and essentially is the least efficient when compared to continuously drying the grain and having options of suction cooling or heat recovery. Different type of dryer. Uh, there's continuous flow mixtures available. These are less popular in the United States. Uh, working for the Focus Energy Program, I think I've seen a total of five of them installed in Wisconsin, and I have heard of um, some in Iowa and Illinois. Mixed dryers have been promoted in terms of providing even, even drying. They're uh, considered relatively efficient when compared to other cross flow type dryers. They're considered self-cleaning. As you can see in this picture, there isn't a screen on the outside of the dryer, so things and other things that come off of the grain just um, blow out through the system. Uh, so consider self-cleaning. And I'll show you a picture to illustrate how they alternate between hot and cool air flows. I like to describe or picture these drives as uh, the Plinko game on the price is right. Essentially, the grain, again, is coming in through the top, and it flows through the system, uh, bouncing around between the hot and cool air ducts or air flows. Uh, so it bounces around and it's be hot and cool sections, which provides efficient and even drying. Uh, some manufacturers, other types of dryers have told me that mixed flow systems have particulate emission issues because they do um, exhaust a lot of fines. 
And I had producers who have used these dryers, and they said, well, I don't think that this mixed flow dryer has really produced much more fines than the continuous flow dryer I used to have. So I think that the fines can vary, of course, uh, according to the season and the types of dryers. Here, frost flow uh, dryer compares to mixed flow in terms of grain flow through the drying system. It's a horizontal standard cross flow system, which is illustrated on the left. The grain is flowing through, warm air is blowing through the plenum, and exhausted on the other side. Mixed flow grain drying, as I um, described with my Plinko analogy, the grain is flowing through areas of warm drying air, which are the gray hatched illustrations, and moist air is being exhausted as it flows through the system. So uh, the, the gradient of temperature and grain flow bounces up and down as the grain flows through a mixed system. Okay, we're done yet with, with describing the different types of systems out there. There are also batch bin dryers systems, uh, which if you recall, we looked at a similar system to this earlier. Uh, the grain is in a big bin. It's loaded to the top, and it's drained via a fan uh, that blows hot air through a perforated floor. It's, the drying starts at the bottom, moves up, and I'm going to talk to you now about the three types, high temperature, low temperature, and natural bin dryers. Temperature bin dryers heat to about 120 to 160 degrees. Uh, considered the quickest batch bin. Essentially, the more heat you're applying to a drying system, the faster the grain will dry. There are efficiency measures that can be implemented, including a stirring mechanism, uh, which I'll show you, and again, dry aeration. Move that grain to an intermediate steeping step before you move to a final storage. There are low temperature bin dryers where air is heated slightly above ambient temperatures, maybe to about 10 degrees. Um, some of these systems will use gas, others will use an electric resistance type heater to heat the air. Um, it's recommended to have about 29% max moisture content for that type of uh, dryer. If your grain is any um, more wet than 29%, there may be some issues at getting the grain down to a target moisture content. And a stirring mechanism can provide about 25% savings, and I'll show what that looks like. Air bin dryers uh, just use the ambient air. Nothing is heated, and you're just con are using electricity to blow the air through the bins. And um, with all bin systems, they typically will run for weeks, and in some cases, like with a natural air bin dryer, they'll run for a month or three weeks amount of time in order to get the grain dried down to its target moisture. Um, we, we do are, are recommended that moisture content of incoming grain to a natural bin dryer is about 22%. And it's, um, again, a stirration mechanism can from energy savings. All right, without uh, further ado, here's what a grain stirring mechanism may look like. Um, what it is, is it looks like the grain system, which stirs the grain. It brings that hot drain towards the bottom, to, up to the top, and in this system, the grain is being stirred with augers in three different areas, and then this arm rotates around the bin. Um, so you can imagine this like big beers if you're baking, <laughs> making Christmas cookies this time of year. But essentially, swing up the grain in a circular um, auger fashion, and it's allowing the um, drain to mix in with the wet grain, and you could save about 25% overall energy in this type of system. Now, think about that. Grain being augered, stirred around, and what happens? Well, it can be broken up with this type of system. I've made recommendations to producers who have bins that 
are able to be retrofitted with stirring mechanisms look into this option and they say, yeah, you know, I would like to save energy, but I'm a little concerned about the fines and quality of grain. Um, so this type of system would have to be managed so essentially the grain is then chopped up um, by a stirring mechanism. It can also be fitted to be continuous. And um, to describe that, let's take a look at the picture here. Again, the uh, hair is being blown through a bin, drying the grain. And uh, what happens in this instance is as the grain reaches its target moisture, typically along that bottom portion of the bin, it is augered out into a cooling bin right away. Um, so it reaches its target moisture, and it's moved while it's hot and drawn into a bin. Um, you can move grain while it's hot. That allows you to dry it down to one or two points above target moisture because those last couple of points of moisture are removed in the cooling bin um, over here. So bins, if you see them there, you're not sure what they are, if they're low temperature, high temperature. Uh, continuous bins, you can typically see uh, various augers coming off of them. Um, and to remove the grain, there's sensors that measure the moisture level, and a sweep auger takes grain when it reaches that level. Reduces over drying, and you can take out the last couple of points of moisture in the cooling bin. The last type of bin that I'd like to talk to you about is a roof batch dryer. And this type of dryer uh, has a cone-shaped perforated floor where grain is dropped into the top and typically the grain is about two and a half feet deep for drying. You can see the dryer fan is located at the uh, bottom of the cone. It blows hot air through the wet grain. Once grain reaches its target moisture content, the floor of one opens up and drops to the bottom where a cooling fan then kicks in uh, to cool the grain. And what's nice about this system is it allows for some heat recovery. As the grain is cooled, that air rises and somewhat preheats the uh, air for uh, drying at the top of the bin. So heat recovery, uh, to give you an idea of the capacity of this system, you dry about four batches per day. And uh, the standard bins range from 18 foot, which can hold about 540 bushels per batch, up to 36 feet, which can hold uh, about 2,100 bushels per batch. Okay, here's the slide that, that summarizes the relative efficiency of the various uh, systems that we've been talking about. This data is old. It's from the 70s. It's from the world of academia. Um, there isn't a lot of modern independent studies out there. If you're looking for grain dry efficiency data, they're typically found from manufacturers themselves. Um, so with this slide, take it with a, a grain, pun intended, of, of salt here, um, because the relative efficiencies can be variable depending on the gadgets, and maintenance, and management of the various systems. Um, overall, combination high-low temperature has the best efficiency, and I'll talk to you about what that looks like. And then in terms of continuous flow dryers, those with mixed flow, and, um, you know, if you take a high-temperature high type dryer, like a continuous cross flow or um, a batch dryer, and you implement dryation or heat recovery, then you can start to get into um, you know, efficiencies that rank relative to the more efficient dryers. And then remember, just because this no heat bin dryer ranks low on the BTU per pound of water removed scale, it doesn't mean that it's uh, going to cost any less because this one, again, is dependent on electricity for fuel. Okay, move on, Mary. You have a question. Thank you, Jennifer. That is very interesting, all the different types of grain dryers. Now um, we'd like to hear from you all. I have another question for you. 
Um, what are some factors that affect the energy efficiency of grain drying? If you know the answer, please type your response into the chat window. Some factors that affect the energy efficiency of grain drying. I'll get it to type your answers in. An answer here, um, air temperature, humidity, grain moisture, the type of grain, and the type of energy used to dry grain. Uh, someone else says outdoor humidity, a dryer. Thank you all very much for your answers. These are great answers. And Jerry is going to talk more about this next in more detail. Um, some other factors affecting grain drying. So thank you all very much for your answers. Yeah, thank you for your answers. I believe some of you are awake then. Uh, it's hard to tell with the <laughs> webinar if, you, if I'm uh, hitting home. And based on the answers you provided, I would say all of the above. So, so great answers, and thank you for participating. The factors that affect grain drying energy efficiency, like the things that were mentioned, uh, is not only Mother Nature, but so how long grain is kept in the field, and we've talked a bit about that. The system design, the dryer size, handling, um, and maintenance. If the sensors and other components of the dryer are maintained every year, that can definitely keep efficiency at, at peak uh, performance. I would like to just quickly go through the other components of a grain operation, which include grain handling. That's the network of on-farm uh, moving. You need to have these systems to move grain from the truck into a wet bin, from the wet bin to the dryer, and from that dryer to maybe dryeration, steepings or storage. Uh, they typically involve electric motors or power takeoffs that run off of a track um, these are significant to an energy audit beyond the grain drying season because grain is being moved in some operations year round. There are various types of grain movers out there. Pneumatic or air movers use a vacuum to suck air through a, a system, generally loud and, and less efficient than a mechanical system. Uh, they are good because they're flexible. If you imagine a vacuum tube can be moved around various buildings and get the grain where it needs to be. Uh, the components of that system involve the lower, there are air locks and velocity compensators throughout the system as well. Mechanical augering is less prone to clogging. And you see some pictures here. This is an elevator leg is an example of a mechanical transfer uh, where grain needs to be um, audically Mechanical grain moving can be anything from the elevator you see here to auger type system or a belt mover, which uh, we saw in this last picture. All right, there's electricity associated with moving grain and with storing grain. Um, I put an interesting picture up here to give you a, a what unique way of storing grain. Typically, grain is stored in bins, silos, uh, and sometimes trailers on a farm. It can be also stored in a flat building. And what you see in this unique situation, somewhat unique, is a pile with a tarp. Uh, I have witnessed a one bushel pile being stored with a suction fan that's sucking the tarp down through the center. That suction fan was 100 horsepower, and that thing was running just about year-round. Um, so you can see that there's definitely some energy associated with, with storing grain throughout the year. And what can you do to help save energy through storage? We um, recommend aeration controls. Only turn on the fans when needed. And also, for tarp suction in this uh, picture, an anemometer or a wind speed a sensor can sense if it's a really windy day to crank up the suction, or if it's a pretty mild uh, day in terms of wind, the suction can be turned down and that horsepower ramped down 
so that they're not as much uh, power being consumed. So some opportunities for energy savings with grain storage. All right, low on time, so let me run through this example of a grain system. I've worked with a producer uh, this year that wanted to dry um, 1.5 million bushels. He had a dryer, two different dryers he's been using that were about 10 miles apart. Here's a picture of the stack dryer that he had been using. Uh, grain was flowing through the top. It's heated and then uh, typically uh, cooled, going through lower temperatures at the bottom. The system was uh, similar, but it was 10 miles away. I did with this producer, and what you typically do for a an energy audit is you retrieve about three years of, of utility data and gas data along the bushels dried. And um, the moisture content going in and out of the dryer, and that allows us to break down the historical debt into BTUs per pound of water removed. And we um, assess their current situation and recommended the most efficient dryer that uh, the producer was looking into. And what we came up with is uh, the goal was to to compile all the drying that this producer did at one location, in, or at two locations into one facility. And out of the uh, different choices, mixed flow and continuous, the producer chose the tower type dryer that you see in the picture. So how well the proposed dryer will perform? Well, we typically receive specifications from a manufacturer it's a thing we have at this point. There are no independent uh, test standards out there. The ASABE is discussing rain drying testing standards, but they're very difficult to, to implement. Um, the grain dryer specifications, we came up with the savings that this producer will have. Uh, their old system systems cost over $200,000 and operational costs, and um, with the proposed system, the new system, they were able to save almost $25,000 in operation. Um, this would be, I would consider this a conservative example. Some producers can save up to 30 to 50 percent of their costs based on what they're taking out and putting in. Um, although it's conservative, I think it's realistic for a 1.5 million bushel operation to, to see this kind of option. Okay, so that kind of sums up my portion of um, the drying here, Mary. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Um, now I'm going to introduce Andy Vaughn, who is a program engineer with SAIC, which is an Ameren, Illinois, Act on Energy partner. And he's here to tell us about the cash incentives that are available from the Act on Energy program. Welcome. Thanks, uh, Mary and Jennifer. Uh, just a little bit about the Act on Energy program. Uh, the Ameren, Illinois Act on Energy program offers cash incentives to customers to be more energy efficient. Uh, one of these areas is grain drying, but some of the other areas that are available are lighting, VFDs, retro commissioning, HVAC, and the areas you see up here. Um, they both electric and gas incentives. And a gas incentive is paid to you, and so it will help you be more energy efficient to lower your energy bills, and, um, and it also offers other benefits of improving maintenance and things like that when you do upgrades. Um, there's also products available for small businesses and, and large businesses on the online store, um, and so the link is there if you want to that out. Um, for grain drying systems, uh, one thing that you'll need to make sure is that there are um, incentives available to Ameren, Illinois, electric and natural gas customers only through this program. Act on Energy cannot provide incentives for LP or propane systems and cannot provide incentives for fuel switching or installing gas lines. Um, the incentives for grain drying are under our custom program. So when you go to the website, check out the custom program. Incentives are $0.07 cents per annual K 
KWH saved and uh, $1.20 for annual therm saved. Um, and uh, here's some other resources. Uh, the website I mentioned is actonenergy.com, and you want to go to the custom program. But in the process, if you have any questions, please give us a call. There's our general uh, phone number, uh, and there's an email address for general questions, or if you have some specific technical questions on dra grain drying, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. And there's my email. This will also be posted up on the website. Uh, so the big, big thing you write down is actonenergy.com. So that's it. Thank you very much, Andy, for filling us in on the Act on Energy incentives. And Jennifer, would you like to talk about your contact information as well? Uh, briefly, I guess there is. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to give me a call or jot down my email and, and send me a message. Thanks. Great, very much. Okay, now it is time to take the final quiz to see what you learned today. So I'm sharing that with you now, and these are the same questions you saw at the beginning. So I will give you a moment to submit your answers. Okay, Jennifer, Okay, looks like most of you have submitted your final answers, so I'll give you just a few more seconds to get the rest of your answers in, and I'm going to close the poll down in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm going to close the poll now. Thank you all very much for submitting your answers, and I'm going to share these responses. Go over the correct answers now at this time. For number one, um, which of the following is a method for saving energy when drying grain? The correct answer is all of the above. Here are the results so you can see those. Um, for number two, which of the following best describes why it's important to dry grain? The correct answer is A. For grain should be dried to avoid fungus and mold spoilage. And three, the answer is E, A, and B only, heat recovery and dry eration. Thank you once again for your responses. And next, um, like we're getting pretty close to 930, but if you'd like to stay on the line and listen to any um, questions and answers, um, Jennifer and Andy can take any questions you have at this time, so please type those into chat. and. And um, we will get those answered for you. And while you're um, typing your questions into chat, I um, wanted to tell you uh, a couple things. First, um, you'll be receiving the email with the survey, so please let us know about your experience during the survey. And then also I'd like to tell you about a couple of Act on Energy online training events we have coming up. Um, on December 14th at 8.30, we have Bill Scales, the CEO of Scales Industrial Technology, presenting best practices for compressed air to improve industrial efficiency. And on January 11th at 8.30, we have David Gibson uh, presenting on variable frequency drives, energy efficiency options. On January 25th at 8.30, we have 
Don Fournier from CDAC presenting on do-it-yourself energy audits. So that would be very interesting. I know we do have a couple of questions here um, really quickly. This one looks like it's for Andy. Um, it says, when you say no incentives for propane systems, if we're using Ameren for our electricity on that system, would it still be eligible? Yeah, yeah, so the electric side of the savings would definitely still be eligible. Um and and but we not incentivize any of the propane savings, but yes, yeah, only the electric side. Great question. Thank you for the clarification on that. And then we have another question here, and this one is for Jennifer. Um back to the um the grain is stirred with an auger. Um, is the grain damaged every time an auger is used to move or stir it, or is there a way to stir it using those augers that um, does not damage the grain? Hey, I might have um, concentrated a little bit too much on the damage. You can definitely use an auger and have very minimal amount of damage. I just wanted to provide the other side of the coin um, or troubleshoot what producers have told me in terms of over mixing. So um, certainly recommend augers and implement them. Uh, they can save, you know, 10 to 30 percent of the energy, 10 percent to 30 percent of the energy and can be managed such that the grain may not even have a touch of damage. Um, still provide the energy savings. So I'm glad you asked that. I'd have made that system look like a doomsday system, but it certainly is not, and we would recommend it, and it managed appropriately. Great. Thank you very much. And it looks like we don't have any further questions. So thank you all for joining us, and thank you, Jennifer and Andy. That was very interesting. And have a wonderful day. This concludes today's webinar.